Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. I know it's been a while, but I'm back now, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to pseudo-color a couple of grayscale immunofluorescence images, and then after we've colored them, we're going to merge them together to create a composite of, in this case, two colors, red and green. Um, so in my first image here, uh, I've done a phalloidin stain with Texas Red, so I'm doing an actin stain. And in my second image here, it's the same cell, but I've done some sort of green stain, which I honestly can't remember what I was staining for. Um, but it's not important. We'll come back to it in a minute. But if we start with the red channel, or the red image here, uh, the first thing we want to do is if this image is in grayscale, which I believe it is, uh, we want to change it to RGB. So you can get to that by going image mode RGB. And the next thing we want to do is turn this into a red and black image, like you would see sort of if you're using the microscope. And to do that, you want to go down to your adjustment layer button here, and we're going to choose gradient map. And just a quick explanation of what's going on here. With the gradient map, uh, what's going to happen is that you're going to be remapping all of your um, basically grayscale information to color. So what's happening is that all of your black pixels at least according to this gradient that we have here, which we will be changing in a second. Um, but all of your black pixels will be remapped to red, and all of your white pixels, in this case, will be remapped to white. But that's not what we're looking for here, so I'm going to click on this gradient and change things up. So what I want is my lightest pixels to be red, and then my darkest pixels to be black, because that's, you know, what we would expect from an immunofluorescence image. So I'm going to switch these guys up um, so that they're on opposite sides. And obviously we don't want white, so I'm going to click on this arrow here and click on the color and set it to black and hit OK. And I'm pretty happy with this red color, but if you're following along at home, uh, if I double click it, which is another way to bring up the color picker, uh, you can see I've basically just dragged this thing to the bottom, got up to the top corner. Uh, if you want to dial it in specifically, it's a hue of zero, saturation of 100, and a brightness of 100. Or if you're using RGB, it's just straight up R at 255. So if we hit OK, uh, we'll hit OK out of there too. And that's all there is really you need to do to color this image. So I'm going to flip over to my other uh, file here and basically do the exact same thing except with green. So I'm going to go up to Image, Mode, RGB, uh, down to Gradient Map, and click on the gradient. Switch this, uh, whoopsie daisy. So if this happens, I've inadvertently just dragged the arrow off. You can just click back on somewhere in this area right under the uh, little preview here. And switch these guys around like I did before. Change this guy to black. And for my red, uh, the green I'm going to use, I hit it right, right on the money there. So it's a hue of 120, saturation of 100, and brightness of 100, which I think is a pretty good uh, fluorescent green color to use. So I hit OK there, hit OK here, and yep, now we've got a green channel. So really that's, I mean, that's all there is to that for coloring your images. The next thing we want to do is to merge them together. Um, so what's the best way to do this? Uh, as you've probably known from watching other Photoshop for the Scientist videos, if you have, I am a major proponent of non-destructive editing. So what I'm going to do is uh, duplicate this image basically to create a new file and I'm actually just going to call this one merge and so this is going to protect these these two files so I don't do anything to them but now I've got a copy here and the first thing I want to do now with uh, I have my image here and the gradient map and I want to convert this into a smart object and to do that I'll double click my background layer since it's locked and I'll just call this green and if I shift click onto my gradient map uh, and right click and say convert to smart object. Um, basically that's just grouping uh, my layer, uh, adjustment layer and my image sort of into one kind of package. And that just uh, makes it into one layer but also protects it. Um, I'll probably cover smart objects in another video. I don't think I've done it yet. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, first of all I'm going to um, shift click these and say duplicate layers and I'm going to duplicate them into my merge file and so if we go over to merge I'm going to do the exact same thing with this background and gradient map um, by right clicking and saying convert to smart object and so now that I've got two smart objects here my red and my green channel um, to merge them 
is really quite simple. All you need to do is go up to your blending mode uh, options here and we're going to be selecting um, linear dodge or add. And there you go. I mean that's your merge. So that's really all there is to this effect and if that's all you're trying to do then by all means you can stop watching this video. But if you're a little curious about what's actually going on here, I'm going to try my best to explain. And what's happening when we take this top layer and set it to linear dodge, which is also called add, um, essentially what's happening is we're taking the RGB channel information and adding it to the lower layer. And to show you what I mean by that, I'm going to turn off the green layer for now. And if we look at the channels tab, you can see in my red, green, and blue channels, uh, my red channel is the only channel with any information. So from black to white, or in histogram terms, 0 to 255. Green and blue are totally black or totally 0. Uh, similarly, if we look at the green layer, it's the same situation. Nothing in red or blue, but green we have 0 to 255. And so when we use the add blend mode, essentially what's happening here is taking the red channel from 0 to 255 and adding that to the red channel of this layer here, which, like I said, used to be 0, but now it has the 0 to 255 information from the uh, layer that's above it. And if we look here, you can see that's exactly what happened. Um, we have our red channel information here, green channel information here, and still nothing blue because there's no blue anywhere in this image, and we didn't record any. Um, so you notice with these two channels, uh, it's basically where we started with at the start of the project. Uh, we had a black and white image for the phalloidin stain and a black and white image for my, my green stain. And so what's handy here is that all of the original information that I had from these files has been maintained. And while it's not really important for just making a nice picture for a figure, if ever you do want to get into sort of more image analysis, um, maybe looking at co-localization or any sort of intensity values, uh, it's really handy to be able to have this information to come back to. And maybe somewhere down the road, I might get more into actual um, mathematical image analysis. But to be honest, I'm still kind of learning that stuff. So for now, I think we will just leave it there with a nice looking image. So I guess we'll call that a lesson for today. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And I will do my best to respond to them, as I always do. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, I would implore you to do so. Uh, YouTube keeps telling me that I should be asking you guys to do that. Um, and it is a nice feeling to get more subscribers, so please subscribe. And I will sign off by saying, as always, you worked hard to get that data. So why not work a little harder to uh, make sure that it looks just amazing. Okay. <laughs> all right, folks. That does it for today, and I will see you all next time.